Hi everyone, I have got my book with me today because I thought with all the business going on about Amazon and the low and no content books that it got me interested in colouring books and um, how to make those. So of course, like I do when I don't know anything, I bought a course. And today, I'm going to have a talk to you about, uh, what was it called? Holy Colouring Royalties. So there you go. If you're interested, then please hang on for the ride. Hi there. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Lisa Oliver, and I am an MM Paranormal Romance Writer, which re means that I write about men falling in love and those men either have fangs or they might turn furry or they have got magic or something like that because I have a real love of the paranormal world. I'm also a huge fan of love so the two things tie together and um, I am self-published. I have roughly 80 titles and I think it's about 82 um, that I've been writing now for the last eight years and um you can find me on Amazon and Google and anywhere else that you want to type in Lisa Oliver author. So enough about me because you wanted to find out. Look, I am a writer through and through, right? I self-publish and I write my stories and I love writing my stories. But as I've mentioned a couple of times, I think in a couple of other videos, if I get writer's block or something similar, then I like to do art because it's a different part of my creative brain and um, it means a lot to me. It, uh, yeah, it just sort of takes me out of myself and allows my creative muse to work in a different way and usually nine times out of ten I've solved the problem with the book and the length of time it's taken for me to do some art. Now usually my art is in the form of paintings and things. You've probably seen them in, as background in some of my um, work. The um, splash paintings and flow paintings and what do I call them? I think they are, yeah, blow paintings that I've got in my hallway. My, whole, my hallway is full of them. But um, as I'm moving house and I, all my art room and everything is all completely packed away. And uh, yeah, I don't even know where I'm moving to yet, but my house is on the market. Never mind. So I thought, that, you know, I've started doing more tablet art. I um, have myself an iPad, so I've been doing a lot of Procreate tutorials on, uh, you know, thank you YouTube for helping me with Procreate tutorials. And I also have a Wacom tablet on my um, on my desktop computer, so I have also been using learning how to use more with Photoshop and Illustrator and sort of been trying to um, feed my my love of visual art um, in a different way just by learning new skills because you know I mean it doesn't matter if you're 60 or 100 it's I don't believe it's ever too late to learn new skills and what this has to do and and that's why I sort of like got into this coloring book thing and it's not that I've made a coloring book or anything else like that but I didn't know how they did it it was like how could you take regular photos and create coloring books out of them it didn't make sense to me and I figured ah yeah I'm probably paying money to find out the name of a program that does it for you and that's sort of right and sort of not but anyway, this particular program, the um, Holy Colouring Book, was niche specific and it was done by Andreas Quintana. Um, you can find his stuff on Warrior Plus, that's who emailed me about it. And I have bought courses of his before and I have to say straight up front that he does provide the whole picture I think if any of you have ever watched my, um, if you watch the review I did on oh, the tiny books things, you can find that up there. 
Um, I will link to it up there, but it's not actually on the phone bit. You have to look across the screen a bit, but it's there. I will link to that up there. That's the tiny books. Um, they, I one, one of the flaws I found in that particular um, program that I'd bought was that it didn't include any marketing. It just assumed that Amazon was going to do it all. The brilliant thing with Andreas' um, course that he provides um, is that he includes everything from working out your keywords through to marketing your finished book. So, you know, that gets 10 points for me for a start. The course itself cost me $17. And I always figure this is why people like Andreas do this, because, you know, if you've got a really good idea that can help other people make money, then you can make more money doing a course than you could, can do a book. Um, I was a little bit disappointed because it's all done in video, which meant this morning as my research for this video, which might only be 10 minutes long or what have you, or maybe a bit longer. I see I've waffled a bit. But anyway, even if it was 20 minutes long, it probably took me well over an hour this morning to take the notes and, and make the notes and watch the course right through. Because even the bits that I know already, I still need to listen to what Andreas has got to say because this is the information that he's imparting to people who might not be familiar with uploading to Amazon, who might not be familiar with bookmaking. And um, I did think it was a really good idea. Now, as I say, don't get me wrong. I love writing my stories. And I am more of a word person than a colouring book person. However, I have got an idea for creating a colouring book for my covers and just having it as a um, download on my on my blog for, you know, a couple of dollars or what have you. You never know. Some of my readers might be interested in changing the colours on my covers or something. I'm not sure. But anyway, I, you know, I own the rights to my covers. So I might, you know, might just as well um, have a go with that. Now, this is something else um, I was going to go through with, like, basically, it was a seven step, um, seven, you got sent to a page with 70, uh, seven videos on it, all right, uh, when you finished paying, as I say, that was $17, which I was happy to pay, that's American, so I don't know what it would be for you, um, if you're somewhere else in the world, but Warrior's pretty good at letting you know, um, the first one was an introduction. The second video was a keyword analysis and competition. Um, the third one explained how you found images. The fourth one explained to you how you created your pages. And the fifth one was explaining how to compile the book once you had your coloring pages. Then the sixth uh, video talked about outsourcing your cover. Uh, the seventh one so um, it's walked you through how to upload to Amazon. And the eighth one, 10 points to Andreas, promotion for free for your new colouring book. I am really thrilled. Admittedly, that was the shortest video, but, but, wait, there's more. Not only did you get that that course for $17. But at the bottom of that page was a link to dun, 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 how to create colour by numbers pages. You know those paint by number books and paintings that you used to get probably back in the 80s? Well, apparently those books have now become really popular as well. And you get a free link to that course when you sign up for this one. So, of course, I had to pop in there and have a look as well. So, yeah, anyway, let's just say I spent a lot of my time this morning watching videos when I should have been making them, but never to mind. Now, going back to the to the, um, to the course in the, in the first instance, um, and understanding your um, niche research and understand the keywords and things like that. I do think that's like that's more for non-fiction authors. And as a fiction author myself, I don't really do that. 
you know, I write my books, I write my stories. I don't worry about what keywords go in them. You know, I've written so many books, I just throw in the same things when it comes to, you know, putting in your tag words and things like that. I will admit I'm really lazy with that. I just put in the same tag words I already do. But that's because I actively market my book myself off of Amazon. So, you know, I I work really hard to let people know when it's out. So I don't have to rely so much on tags and 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 I don't think you do in 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 fiction anyway because everybody's fiction's different and people only need to search my name and preferably not have the adult you know that they don't want adult stuff showing up because otherwise none of my books show up at all but you can still find me on Google <laughs> um but yeah it's it I I understand See, I don't think they apply for colouring books. This one, this particular course was about doing it for Bible texts, which I can understand is a super amazing niche market on its own. But the problem is, I like, like say I was a newbie, say I was doing this, and I got this course today and I sat down and I started watching the videos, which is actually what I did. I made myself a couple of slices of toast and I just sat there and started watching these videos and taking notes. The problem is, is that by the time this video came out and this course came out, that trend for Bible verses, uh, colouring books, Bible verse colouring books, will have already gone. Because Andreas had said what the course was when he promoted it. So anybody with a canny eye for the next best thing is already going to know that that's the niche that he's talking about because it was in his sales page. And he is right. Um, Bible verses are a, um, they are an evergreen market. And I imagine that they are extremely popular too because adult colouring books are a really good idea, but it's not only adults. Um, a lot of the books that he showed um, on, on Amazon were also for um, young girls from ages 9 to 12 and for teenagers. So there is clearly a huge market for these types of books. Um, but, you know, that said... He, for example, the first, the whole first of the first video was showing these fantastically successful books that have been on Amazon for a couple of years and are still successful, which is amazing in itself because most self-published fiction authors like myself will know that if you put your book on Amazon, um, my book Being Loki went up live on I think it was about a week or so ago, and it stayed in the top 10 of my genre for about five days, which is pretty freaking cool because it can be on number one spot and dropped to number 20 by the next day, depending on how many sales that book had. So the fact that I managed to stay in the top 10 for at least five days was a huge deal. But this is something that Andreas doesn't mention in when he's doing his... Um, his spying on these books because they all have these little programs and widgets and things that you know tell you supposedly how much these people have made on these books every month but the problem is is that is based on the book's ranking and anybody who knows amazon knows that the book's rankings amazon calculate them every hour so what might be a popular book at three o'clock in the afternoon by the following morning could have dropped right off the rankings again, depending on how many sales there are in that particular genre and how well that book does against its peers. So the whole of the first video was kind of a bit of a, oh, look, you did a really good idea in buying this course, but it didn't really tell you anything. You'd clearly obviously already decided if you were going to buy this course that you were going to create colouring pages using Bible text um, and other drawings and things and you wanted to find out how to do that. So the first video was pretty much null and void. The second one on keyword analysis and competition research, again, that was the same. 
it all ties into that. You know, look at how great these books have done. I think Andrea showed four and he showed about keywords in the title and things like that. And I, I honestly believe that um, there is a lot of saturation in a lot of markets. And if there isn't a saturation in a market, then it means that um, there isn't the market there for it. And that is a possibility. Now, clearly there is for Holy Verse coloring books. However, what I would be looking at with rather than worrying about keywords is I would be worrying more about creating high quality content. Like so these pages are unique and unusual enough to incur repeat customers because that's something else about adult coloring books. It's, you know, people who get fascinated by it or who relax with it and what have you, they will keep going. They will keep buying. So if you create more of the same with the same levels of high quality and attention to detail and those things that people are looking for in a coloring book, then you will make more money. So he does talk about finding the images in video three, which was very useful. And then he explains how to um, turn those uh, images into, um, da -da 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 -da. what was he doing? Into the coloring images on, actually, no, he didn't. That wasn't in this one, sorry. I have been learning too much today. He was telling you about where you could find images. And I wrote that down specifically because he, Andreas is also really good at pointing out where you need to find out. If you've got a picture um, that you've got from a site, he shows you where to find the license information for that picture. Because it is vitally important that you do not use a picture that is copywritten by somebody else. There is plenty of um, private, uh, public domain pictures available. There are a lot of artists who put their photos and things out for free for people to use. But you need to check that the items you are using, especially if you're going to put them in a book, has a commercial license as well because you are selling a form of the image. And then, as I say, the course goes on and it explains about creating the pages, compiling the book and talking about outsourcing, which I found was quite interesting because he was talking about Fiverr, which most people know about now. And one of these days I'm actually going to do a Fiverr thing to see whether or not it is possible to get a book written, a cover done, the editing and proofreading done and the marketing done for a book all by paying for it on Fiverr. But I have a feeling I'll probably need a bit of a, a quite a bit of a, ba a bank balance for that. So probably won't be coming up too soon. As I say, the key things with this course was the fact that he also mentioned ways of marketing this book for free. And that is a huge deal because most of these courses that explain to you how to make these various things, products, do not explain to you how to market afterwards. And his ideas there, even though that was the shortest video in the whole course, did make sense and would probably work, provided you weren't spamming everywhere. I think that it would. The thing is, is that writers like myself, you know, I suppose I get really, um, uh, you know, most of the information in this channel of mine is about how to write. And over on my other channel, um, Lisa Writes, I am actually writing online, on screen, so you can see, you know. And that is really important to me because that's how I fill my books. But the thing is, is that not everybody's got the inclination to want to write. Um, not everybody, yeah, not everybody feels that they, that they want to create a story, but maybe they are artistic. Maybe they do, can design a page. And what better way to make, a mon make money than with a colouring book published on Amazon, which you can do as a self-publisher. So I th that's why I was doing this video today, because I wanted you to see that one, 
There was other ways of creating books, which I think I've also mentioned in, in other videos that I've done. But a colouring book is, you know, who's to say that a colouring book is is as important or not or whatever else as the, as the genre fiction that I put out or as any other book goes out as a non-fiction book. You know, books are book books. Readers have them or users have them for a purpose. And so people might read my books and smile, but people might also be smiling while they're filling in your colouring book. So that's why this is mentioned here today. The second thing is, is that the self-publishing things, the good things about self-publishing, such as being in control of your cover, being in control of how your pages look, being in control of the upload process so that you are putting it out on dates that work for you and being in control of everything, including the money that comes back to you for sales, um, which is a wicked huge 70% if you price your book. Um, hang on, paperback is slightly different. So I think it's 60%. But even so, you still can make a really good return on your work and it is once you've the book is up there it is a form of passive income um i just did a reading before uh which will come out on the 4th of june for the reluctant wolf which was my first ever book written published back in 2014. um it's really not my best book at all although the characters are quite mean and the, the plot's not bad but you know the actual construction of the book itself the head hopping I did, the bad grammar, the fact that it wasn't edited and things like that, um, they're all still true and that book still sells. So um, one of these days I'm going to relax and take enough time off to actually redo that book and do it properly. But it was a good example and I had read it and done the reading for it as an example of my first book so that people could see that you don't have to be perfect to start. And I think the same applies to colouring books. If you haven't got the knack of writing, but you know what looks pleasing on a page, then a course like Andreas's is a really good idea. And even if you don't want to pay $17 for it, you can find less information or pick up the clues and just take longer time to go through somewhere like YouTube or what have you to pick up the different points that are part of that process. But it still allows you to create a career. It still allows you to have um, a passive income. And that is why I mentioned it today. I will, if I can find it, I will drop a link to Andreas's course in the description below. Um, this isn't sponsored. He doesn't even know I'm doing this. But I was very impressed with, um, like, I have been in this business, well, it's actually longer than eight years because prior to that I was ghostwriting for other people. So I have been in this business probably about 15 years. But I was still surprised there was a couple of sites and things that, that Andreas mentioned in this colouring course that I hadn't heard of before. And I thirst for new knowledge. So I was really pleased about that. And I'm not going to say whether or not it was worth the $17 or not. I paid it because that's what Andreas wanted for it. But what I really did love was the bonus that I got for the um, paint by numbers course that came with it. I thought that was super cool because that also involved a site and a program I didn't know about. And yeah, I'm always, I love that sort of thing. But anyway, I think I have waffled long enough. If colouring books and things like that are your thing, then definitely have a look around and find more information about it. There has been a lot of talk lately, which is another reason why this came up to, for me, there's been a lot of talk amongst writers and publishers and marketers and that lately about the changes that Amazon are making to um, no content and low content books like planners and notebooks and things like that, that they're now no longer classified as books. They're classified as stationary, which I think is a good idea, you know, because one expects a book to have something of value in it. So... 
colouring pages have got that. They've got designs. They've got a theme. They're fun to use. And maybe, just maybe, they are the sort of way that you can either create a side hustle or, who knows, maybe it becomes a career because I know that a number of people have done it. But anyway, I digress. It's getting late here this evening. I've had one of those days. So I'm sorry if I've been a bit waffly and it looks like I have 25 minutes long, my goodness. Um, I will say that if you did enjoy anything in this, please hit the like and subscribe because that lets YouTube know that I actually say something that's worth listening to. And um, how about you hug the ones you love, my friends? Because um, it's Pride Month, June's Pride Month, and that's always really awesome. So hug the ones you love, and until our next video, I'll just say bye.